In Russia, the second Mi-8 helicopter with passengers on board has disappeared from radar in recent days. Earlier, 22 people died in a crash in Kamchatka. Now, an emergency has occurred with a helicopter in Buryatia, which had six people on board. The Russian Emergencies Ministry says there may have been a crash, but the local governor says the helicopter was found after a hard landing that left two people injured. The internet emphasizes that old Soviet equipment is gradually exhausting its resource and breaking down. But instead of modernization, all the money is spent on the war with Ukraine. Instead of development, the Kremlin spends the Russian budget on fighting sanctions and meat storms of waste heaps and landings in Donbass, so the number of disasters and their victims will only increase, commentators note. Apparently, this is already a completely systematic phenomenon. The end of the operational cycle of machines that have exhausted their resource. It is impossible to use mechanisms indefinitely without replacing them, but it seems there is not much to replace them with. Russian analyst Anatoly Nesmian comments on the emergency. The Mi-8 is a two-engine helicopter designed in the 1960s. It is widely used in Russia where crashes have been frequent as well as in neighboring countries and many other nations. Mi-8 helicopters are built at Ulan Ude Aviation Plant and the Kazan Helicopters, both Russian helicopters companies. Currently, more than 12,000 Mi-8-17 helicopters have been produced, a record for twin-engine helicopters anywhere in the world. They have been supplied to more than 100 countries worldwide and racked up total flying time of about 100 million hours. The following models are currently in production. Mi-8AMT, Mi-8MTV-1, Mi-171, Mi-171A1, and Mi-172. In August 2021, an Mi-8 helicopter with 16 people on board, including 13 tourists, crashed into a lake in Kamchatka due to poor visibility, killing eight. In July that year, a plane crashed as it came in to land on the peninsula with 22 passengers and six crew on board, all of whom were killed. The Biden administration is getting ready to make more concessions to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky by allowing him to use almost any U.S. weapons for strikes, including inside Russia, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said. Commenting on a recent remark by Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh, who confirmed that the Kiev regime had been allowed to use U.S. weapons in its terrorist incursion in the Kursk region, the Russian diplomat noted that the U.S. establishment has thrown common sense out of the window, believing that they can do whatever they want. Ukraine has been given full carte blanche for operations in Russian regions. Moreover, the Joe Biden administration is obviously getting ready for more concessions to Zelensky in giving him free reign to use almost any U.S. weapons, including for strikes inside Russia. Zakharova maintained, describing the U.S. policies as increasingly pursuing escalation, being driven by ambitions of world domination. Washington has been intensifying tensions with Russia as it seeks to inflict a strategic defeat on our country and it is not looking to avoid escalation, despite statements by a number of high-profile U.S. officials. She lamented, Ukraine's daring ground offensive has taken the fight to Russia, but not nearly as much as its leaders would like because, they say, the United States won't let them. The U.S. restricts the use of long-range ballistic missiles it provides to Ukraine, which wants to aim them at military targets inside Russia. Ukraine's offensive, along with a barrage of drones and missiles that Moscow launched this week, has intensified pressure on the Biden administration to ease its cautious approach to the use of Western weapons in escalating Ukrainian attacks. The Biden administration says its careful deliberations, including which advanced weapons it supplies to Ukraine and when, are necessary to avoid provoking retaliation from Russian President Vladimir Putin. Some analysts agree Putin would take a Ukrainian strike by an American long-range ballistic missile as an attack by the US itself. But other American and European supporters of Ukraine say the White House should see that Putin's threats of attacking the West, including with nuclear weapons, are bluster. Their fear is the US support that has allowed Ukraine to withstand Russia's 2022 invasion comes with delays and caveats that could ultimately contribute to its defeat.